Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW 2020 video. Join us again for some more Impact Wrestling on the road to our pay-per-view rebellion. As you can imagine, from taping to taping, nothing really happens, so not much to report. Apart from one thing, it's going to be a two months and two weeks injury for Alicia Edwards following that injury last week. I think she can work through it, but we'll probably just keep her off television to allow a full recovery and not to aggravate it any worse than it is. So without further ado, this is this week's Impact Wrestling. So we continue to book the shows from the Ocean View Pavilion. Um, we start off with Eric Young saying, Yep, I am happy to face Big Kaz at Rebellion. But let one thing be made perfectly clear. Your friends in the hospital, Big Kaz. Make or make sure there's a there's a bed ready next to them because violent by design is going to hurt you and they're going to send you to the hospital just like Enzo. So blunt, straight to the point, threatening big cars with injury. Eric Young starts the show with a 43 promo. Opening contest of the evening was decent. Mark Cardona continues to build momentum with a victory over Evil Uno in 1020 with the Rough Rider. A 46 here, 49 for Cardona, 38 for Evil Uno, and he was really off his game. So just building Matt Cardona up, just continues a promo, continues to week by week show that I'm always ready. Come on guys, come on management. I've never had a, a real opportunity for a championship. I had one, but I wasn't ready at the last day about three seconds. But I feel I'm ready now to go for the Impact World Championship. Uh, basically, it was a random raw match he was in against Sheamus and Sheamus basically Bell, Bro Kick, 1, 2, 3. Can't remember what year that would have been, maybe about 2011, 2012, but it happened. I remember. I was on the Zack Ryder bandwagon. We had some action in the knockouts division. It was about that didn't have much heat and terrible wrestling. Taya Valkyrie continues to build momentum with a victory over Killer Kelly and 439 with a Northern Light Suplex. So just a 25 here, this I believe is a storytelling match of the night. Yep, so obviously a few points deducted for that. But a 40 for Taya and a 22 for Killer Kelly. We then had some montage clips of the Good Brothers preparing for their matchup. Now, when I had the idea of this one, it was more like um, a kind of comedic skit where they're trying to improve Gallows' uh, cardio. We're obviously scared that he's not going to be able to wrestle the full amount of time. And they've got him training and training and half the time he just wants to go for a beer. And it's like, Carol Anderson dragging him back from the, the pub just to like, no, no, back to the treadmill. Or when he keeps trying to open my beer, it's like, no, no, can I do that? So just a wee comedic segment here. Uh, just to toy with the idea, can Gallows go the 30 minutes? And that's a 57. Good promo, actually. We had a decent matchup that saw the motorcycle machine guns. Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin defeat Renault Scum. Adam Fornstow and Luster the Legend and they win in 10.41 when Sabin pins Fornstow with a cradle shock. A 45 here, that's actually not too bad. Both teams get the tag team specialist bonus. Luster was off his game. But yeah, just a win to give the machine guns a bit of momentum. Then it's some action in the X Division and it was a decent matchup that saw TJP defeat Alex Reynolds in 8.12 with a jumping net breaker. A 48, basically giving TJP a victory because there's something going to be building in the X Division. And as much as I do enjoy Reynolds and Silver, they are going to have to portray enhancement talents here as talent has been brought in from afar. Or AEW. Then a, a promo with Enzo, just detailing his recovery. It looks like it is still going to be a few weeks before he is back from being put through that table by Dangerous from Design and it just shows you in the hospital watching the footage as well of the attacks by Violent by Design it shows him trying to get out of the bed to go and save cars but obviously just being too weak and having to stay in the, the hospital bed I know we're milking this pretend injury so you know it's been like three weeks since it happened but uh, obviously it isn't actually injured but that's the storyline we're running with we had some more action in the Knockouts division as the Knockouts Tag Team Champions, Team Seasars, teamed with Jordan Grace. And they defeated Madison Rain and Tasha Steeles and Kira Hogan. 
I'll give them a real tag name soon when they actually have a push plan for them. And it was a win in 1022 when Job and Grace pinned Madison Rain with a fall from Grace. So obviously Madison is retired in real life. Uh, no intentions at the moment to do that in the game, but obviously women in TW and in wrestling in general retire way earlier than their male counterparts. So I don't want to you know invest too much in a push. I think it should be more a player coach role to help everyone else go over. But at 36, delighted with that. As I say, we're still a long way in booking and getting over steals. Hogan and uh, Elm XO and Vox as well. More knockouts action, and it's just basically Thunder Rosa backstage, minding her own business, when out of nowhere the knockouts champion Diana Perozo and Kimberly, the two of them just beat the crap out of Thunder Rosa, and it leads to Diona standing over with the knockouts championship belt saying, You want a shot at this? You want this? Well, tough luck, it's mine, and you're not going to get it. So a 43 there as we continue to build some heat with those two. With a poor matchup, Ace Austin with a win over Larry D in 11-11 with the House of Cards. A 44 here. Simple, just giving Ace Austin momentum in and using Larry D as an enhancement talent. Nothing else really to say about that one. Standard. Give someone more momentum. It cuts a promo and it says, Well, oh, James Storm, you want to get your hands in me and you're willing to put anything on the line to get that opportunity. Put your career on the line then. You can answer me next week on Impact, but if you want to face me at Rebellion, you will put your career on the line. 51 for Ace Austin. We had Crispy defeat Hernandez in 7.53 with a triple C. This was decent, it was a 47, a 35 performance from Hernandez and a 51 by Crispy. Obviously the likes of Hernandez is, he's kind of close to 50, so you obviously want to put the younger guys over. And Chris Bay gets a, a pretty good coup uh, in this one. And after the matchup, he just basically continues to taunt Chad Betts. You know, ain't you this good? Look at look at this guy, look what I can do. You've been here five minutes, I've been here a little bit longer than that, and I should be getting all the opportunities and all the TV time. You know what I mean? I ain't scared of you, you want to face me anytime, any place. Just being proper arrogant in a 45 promo. The main event for the evening was an AEW special, and it was a good matchup that gave Pentagon Jr. the victory over Darby Allen in 15-28 with a top rope styles clash. 56, Darby with the 58, Pentagon with the 52. Uh, obviously, please take in consideration, uh, it is a completely different mod I'm using from the one in the AEW save, and obviously the ratings that the AEW guys get is after a prolonged period of booking as well, and this is only a few months in, so... Keep under consideration, but this one is a bit more harsher than the other mod that's quite kind towards people's overness. So, uh, yeah, that's why we're getting 50 60s, and that probably draws about an 80 in the, in the other save. And last but not least, an angle to finish the show. I only got a 45. Well, Kurt Angle comes out and he books the matchup for the pay-per-view that confirms it is going to be a six-man matchup. It's just a typo with the angle because there's six names there and it says books a five-way. So we're going to see for the Impact World Championship Rich Swan defend against EC3, Moose, Matt Cardona, Pentagon Jr and Eddie Edwards. So a massively stacked main event with those six guys. Hopefully Pent is available. We we'll have moved all events to Friday where we'll still get this deal with AW. Uh, and if we can get anybody else to pop up in the next couple of weeks, great. But I think we are going to be business as usual. The show, thankfully, was still a 51. It still increases the popularity in 34 regions, despite the production deductions. Overall, I'm happy with it. As I say, it's just getting sure the card is as over as possible as we head to Rebellion. So one more taping in our next episode, that will close out the card, we'll obviously touch on a few stuff uh, regarding the Knockouts match, more stuff between the, the FTR sorry, and the Good Brothers, and we'll probably touch on a bit between the feud of Ken Shamrock and Sammy Callahan. so we've gave him a few weeks break, uh, and obviously just you, you can't book Ken Shamrock in more than one match in a taping, or he's just going to be fatigued and risking injury. So as always, good day and good night. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.